Welcome back to the Waddle Park Animals Div 12 Resis Game Day Vlogs. We take on Ormond, who are second on the ladder. We need one win from our last two games to cement ourselves in the finals. If you've been loving the series and you want to support the boys, please subscribe to the YouTube channel down below so you don't miss any future episodes. Before we get into this vlog, I want to talk about our last home game coming up this week down at the zoo at 11.40 on Saturday. It's going to be Lenny's game. Our coach Lenny is raising money for Wicks for Kids and the Australian Alopecia Foundation, a cause that's really close to Lenny's heart, having suffered alopecia over the last couple of years. A lot of fun stuff happening at the game. If you want to support Lenny and his fundraiser, there's going to be a link in the description down below. Or come down on Saturday and support the animals in our final game and support Lenny, who's doing some great stuff as well. Oh, ready to go. I was a bit soft last week, so I'm uh, stocked up. Brand deal with Red Bull. Ready to go, charging, and uh, hopefully I'm not a little soft cock today. Oh, I've also got this one. Just key. If you want to play some tough footy, key. I'm good, Dan. How are you? Yeah, very good, mate. Very good. Um, I have a little bit of a, a blocked nose, but you know what? I only need to breathe out of one of my nostrils. Uh, so I'm feeling surely this is the game I kick another goal. I haven't kicked right in like six weeks. Keen to uh, play my second game for the Waddle Park Animals. Didn't uh, think going into this weekend I was going to be playing, but here I am. When did you get the call up? Yesterday. <laughs> okay, and you had to travel all the way down here? All the way from Adelaide, yeah. 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 So that was uh, nice to jump on a plane and, you know, have that, try and get in that game sort of mentality, which can be a bit difficult, so. Morning, mate. How Today, are you? No Lambies tonight. No Lambies. Um, <laughs> I heard a rumour though we might go to Revs. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> keep me out of it. Keep me out of it. How no, was your you. uh, journey to Geelong last week? Well, we caught the V-Line, it wasn't the plan. And then we caught two Ubers back, also wasn't the plan. So we put all this planning in after footy, we're at half time, worrying about the, how we're going to get to Geelong. And then post game, everyone makes up their own mind and gets their own way there. Um, Katie McDonald, yeah, pretty good performance. Uh, Ethan Baker, great performance. I'm trying to think who else was good. Bailey McCabe, three votes. Um, Jared Davis, worst on ground. I keep watching the vlogs, Dan. I keep looking at my eyes, and I have the biggest bang in my eyes, so I wake up a bit later. So I got up at seven this morning to hope it fixed itself. I don't think it has, but we'll see. <laughs> I think that does the opposite. Yeah, it, it might have. Time. It might have. You're right. Coach has gone through with the goods. <laughs> we went to the footy last night. It's made me clinically depressed. I think I'm going to restructure my priorities in life. Football gives me nothing but pain. Bottle Park lose by 130 points last week. Carlton lose to Port Adelaide. I don't know, man. I think I've got some big questions that need to be answered. I might find. I might get into religion. I think. Did I do that right? <laughs> it looked good. I don't check the price. All I do is swipe. Um, that was outrageous by me there. That's not good. Um, chilly, windy, but dry this week. Thank. God. Boys are here on a mission. We're away from home at Ormond. Um, and it's a big eight point, well it's not an eight point game, but it's a big eight point game for us more than them. We've got St. Mary's breathing down our neck. They've got a easier fixture today, so they should win. If they win and we lose, they might jump us on the ladder and kick us out of the fourth position spot going into the last round. There's a lot on the line. I'll tell you what, I'm feeling as fresh as an obese, injury-prone loser could. You're moving like a gazelle. Thank you very much. That's fucking shit out. I was just um, just waiting for a lead. <laughs> Fuck. Has literally told me to get out the rooms when I'm putting my free boots on. Not very good. One footy boots, one New Balance 550s. How'd what? Carlton go? I don't want to talk about it. Yep. Early, yeah. half an hour early. Yes, yes. Half an hour later. Looking good. Looking. Just wanted to dress up for the occasion. Can we do some walk-in fits, some <laughs> fit photos? Yeah, sure. Um, how are you feeling? Yeah, good, good. Yeah, look. Friday night, down at Electric. This is a game, Dan, where if we don't win today, all the pressure goes on next week. Now, we can do it the easy way and knock it off this week. And have everyone get goals. And then we just get wild. Or, 
We can shit up hands and then have to worry next week. So you choose. You choose. I'd rather this week. Just watch Baz do his hamstring break dancing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, really good hamstring start. awareness, guys. Uh, hashtag. Not to worry about playing all these weird tactics or shitty kick on the ground. We'll just kick it forward. We can actually play our proper game. So. Just suck into it. Lenny, your team lost last night. You said to me that's the only loss you've taken this weekend. So, what's the plan? Um, well, we've got pretty much fuel here. Thanks <laughs> to me. Yeah. Yeah. We've got loads of bakery to get up and pretty much fuel. So, if you guys don't want anything now, just help yourself at half time. Yeah! Um, because we're going to need all the fuel we need for today. What? One, two, three! One! 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 Walking out to start this important clash for the water park animals and Jara and myself were sent to the bench. Checkers said, I don't care if you guys are in the leadership group. I don't care if you're my mates. You're going to the pine. And the reason Jara and I went to the pine is because we didn't go to training on Thursday night. Over the last three or four weeks, the zoo has been sodden. So trainings have been cancelled and moved around and not on. And Czech has had an idea that when the ground gets muddy to move our trainings to a car park. So after the rain of last week and Tuesday night training being cancelled, um, so I thought I'm probably not going to get a lot out of the car park session. So I um, gave training a miss and was met with ramifications of starting on the pine. So Ormond are second on the ladder. We dropped the undroppable against them last time. Um, we played them earlier in the season and they pinched one late against us. We were the strongest side for majority of the game and we couldn't quite get it done so we thought if we come here with the right attitude there's a chance that we can pinch this one and cement ourselves in finals and to be honest it was one of the worst starts we've had for the season they kicked goal after goal after goal after goal and I felt completely helpless I was sitting on the pine twiddling my thumbs but it was an onslaught early the Ormond lads came to play so they were up and about, they were switched on, and they jumped us with the first couple of goals of the game. They piled on snag after snag, and I'm sitting there on the pine feeling helpless. I'm going, man, I just want to help my side. I just want to get out there and contribute. Finally, after an onslaught of goals, the call was made. Release myself and Jara. And I was itching to get out there. I couldn't wait to get out on the ground and hopefully contribute to steadying the ship. Checkers gets a clearance, um, goes wide. Jared Davis picks it up. He kicks inside 50. I thought I probably should have marked this. 35 floats back and doesn't influence the contest the way he should. Um, drops the ball, it falls into my lap. And as quickly as I land, I slap it on the boot and it goes through. So I give a big fist pump. I was absolutely pumped to be back on the ground. I was absolutely pumped to get our first goal of the game. And finally, the Waddle Park animals have turned up. We start to tilt the ground towards our forward line in the back end of the first quarter. Ormond go for a switch that wasn't on because of the forward pressure from Will Taylor. He takes a one-handed mark and he says, don't kick it anywhere in my vicinity. He goes back, lines up and has a shot. And with that strong breeze, it pushes it across the face. And I take an uncontested mark on the boundary line. Now, I'm confident I didn't step over the, the boundary. So it wasn't on the fall and it wasn't touched. So I go back to take my kick. And the umpire has called play on. He said it was touched. The Ormond lads were arguing that it might have been out of bounds. And that's the only thing it could have been. It could have been a mark or it could have been out of bounds because potentially I juggled it over the line. But it was just an absolute uncontested mark and a half on the siren. 
and the umpire invented that it was play on. So that was a bit of a, a head scratcher going into quarter time, but we were pumped that we had slowly but surely uh, got ourselves back into the contest. We got the best balls in the fucking comp. We got Caden down there, we got Smitty down there, we know we got some good bodies, we got Cooker, we got Sketch, you can fucking pit some people's heads, use them, alright? Let's get the ball to them, kick 10 snacks. Alright, shut the umpire up, shut their crowd up, shut their team up, and we just. We get, we get back into the right. I prefer back shoulder more than anything. Correct. But I would say move, and if you kick back shoulder, at least you've got your guy on the move as well. Yep. Yep. And use your body. If you're Cheeky standing, body. yeah, he'll get you under the ball. Because we're gonna have we're gonna have plenty of players running back once that ball hits ground. Yeah. But especially especially going towards Dossie, they're playing at a much taller bloke on Dossie. If we can fucking get out. Get one just over the top. Yeah, they'll be fat side as well. If, if they fall back on Dossie, they'll be fat side. Look at who's, who's on the other side. Four water bottles is too is too much for an 11 year old kid. <laughs> Second effort's gonna be fucking everything because they're not very quick in the mid. I mean, it's pretty pretty clean. We've got some clean ball users. They're not very clean. So if if we don't win the tap and they get the ball, they're fumbling. Slow quarter, but we've built into it. Probably the best side for the last 10 there. Big term here, we're going to get ourselves back in. The second quarter kicks off, we knew we had the wind and we knew that this was our time to capitalise and um, really get on top of the contest. The ball's deep in our defence and we go coast to coast. It's probably one of the best plays we've done for the season. I'm pretty sure Dan gets involved, I'm pretty sure Bakes gets involved. And then Michael Allen, everyone's favourite teammate to play with. He's all heart, he's all ticker, he never gives up. He gets it in the middle of the oval and I started pointing towards the pocket, which dragged my opponent back. And then I pointed forward at the last second and he just drops it 30 metres out directly in front and allows me to get there. It was a perfect kick, it was a perfect play. Um, I convert and capitalise and the boys are starting to feel themselves here. We feel like we're on. So the boys are on. We've kicked the last couple of the game. We're feeling ourselves. We have the wind. Michael Allen has turned into prime time Darcy Parrish. He's walking it out of the clearance. Goes long again. I pick the ball up and... So I've been more conscious of giving that first handball rather than going for goal first. I didn't pass and I didn't confidently have the shot. I sort of did neither of any of that. So that was frustrating. Trader Aid, he's been in the back pocket the last couple of weeks and he's a, he's a handy little man to have down there. Um, big body and he uses it, which is what I love about traders. Um, he puts, <laughs> puts a bloke on his backside. He took a couple of intercept marks. Um, yeah, he can get criticised at times, the big traders, for not having high disposal. But I think that's lazy analysis. I think if you look into how Shrey contributes to our side, you'd see that it's not about the disposals. It's about the aura around the footy. And on the weekend, I thought his aura was awesome. We missed chances in this second quarter and it's, it's starting to become frustrating the amount of times we can't quite convert. Um, and they converted chances into the breeze. So it became that sort of 12 point swings where we're missing one with the breeze that they were slotting. They were slotting them from 55 in the first term and we can't quite kick them. And then they're going into the breeze and slotting them. So it, it became evident that, yeah, we were up against it and we were just digging ourselves into a hole. Late in the second term, Rog takes a great mark and converts a sausage roll, which was handy for us going into half time. But frustratingly, we're not quite as close as what we would have wanted to be. I think we went goal for goal that quarter. We made some inroads. We played alright, we just didn't capitalise on it into side 50s a little bit. Who do we blame there? Maybe the guy deep inside 50. Um, I'll put my hand up. But mid midfield hanging in there, back line hanging in there. We'll get our chances, especially late. So, um, And we don't have to do it all at once. We don't need five goals in the first five minutes. Kick two or three this term, we'll just stay with them. We'll have that win in the last quarter. We'll come home strong. So, not out of it. It's tough. I think we're zoning off riders, um, attack and defenders, that when we're defending, we're not getting the strokes right. I feel like I'm standing on two or three blokes at one time. But I think we'll fix it and we'll come out a bit stronger. Uh, 
We've got a lot of space, like we're definitely just not looking hard enough, but got to try and hold them off this quarter and come over the brace strong, hopefully. Boys, um, aside from um, like effort and everything the boys have said already, we need to play smart footy because there is a heavy breeze. I feel like in that quarter, we thought the breeze would do it all for us, so we just kicked it long to the top of the square to an out number. Just because we had the breeze in the last quarter, don't just bomb it long. Wait for the right option rather than kicking it to an out number. Yeah. And this quarter, we're against the breeze, so we need to fucking man up all across the ground. And also, kicking against the breeze on the ground this big is hard. We're better off if we run and carry, so we need to overlap run. This quarter against the wind, run, handball. Last quarter, we're going long, but to the right option, don't just kick to our number. Make sure, don't have to do it all at once. Don't have to do it all this quarter. So if we can win the quarter by a goal, be within touching distance and come out strong. So no need to panic, just kick away this turn and we'll get back in it. We're only down by 26 points, and that's not that much, guys. That's what Carl brought by to say. We're up by 30 The third quarter kicks off and this is where the game was probably lost for us. We had the ball completely in our forward 50 for the first 15, 20 minutes of this quarter and we couldn't buy a goal and it was because we were kicking into the breeze and it was a tough breeze to kick into. Yeah, we had opportunity after opportunity, couldn't quite convert. Baker missed an opportunity streaming through the 50. One of our stars, Jackie Lindros, took three great contested marks, got a high free kick, had four shots on goal in a row. And in that breeze that was so tricky, couldn't quite convert one of those. We had Jim Brady float down there, take a mark and kick a goal. And that felt like a bit of a fire starter, but it was too little, too late in that quarter. Um, having all the ascendancy and all the momentum and not being able to convert, it, it was probably the tail of the day. And then in the last five minutes of that term with the wind, they kicked three or four and pretty much put the nail in the coffin. Though we knew if we went all chips in, we could make a fist of it in this final turn. What's going on? Oh, I feel like uh, when we're, we're not playing smart footy, when we are going against the wind like then, the forwards are too far away. It's never going to get there. It needs to be a 100 metre kick against the wind. So push up. We just need to play smart. Use the wind to our advantage. Dumb, dumb. They fucking got dropped on their heads as a baby half of these blokes. I'm sick of it. Talk to me there. You guys had the moment at the start of that court? Yeah, I had four or five shots. Couldn't quite convert it. That's all right. Tough into the wind. They're a good side. We just need to fight it out. You need to find your path. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Nice and tight, nice and tight. Yeah. Uh, I used some weird analogies, but we're pretty much in the last escort. I've lost all my money and I've got 50 bucks left. All right? We're throwing it all in. We're throwing it all in. Oh, pike and we're going to kick six cuts, seven, ten. How many goals do we need? Ten goals this quarter, all right? Let's go. Six, right, Pike, drink what you like. Let's go. All right? Checker's message at three quarter time was that we are going all chips in. We go on the Hail Mary, which I absolutely love. We moved Jared to the forward line. We moved Dan to the midfield. And we said, come on, lads. Let's have a fair old crack at this one. And once again, same as the third quarter, for the first 15 minutes, it was all Waddle Park. The forward pressure was high. We kicked a few goals in a row. We had momentum. And we were putting it on the scoreboard. So to start this last quarter... The Wattle Park lads feel like we've got a hell of a lot of momentum. We just need to keep converting these chances. Halfway through the last, we get within four goals. I apply my first bit of forward pressure I've done all season and get a holding the ball inside 50. So I go back to take my shot and I wanted to go really quickly. And the umpire kept telling me to move my mark. And in the moment, I'm like, he's doing this on purpose. I don't know if he was or he wasn't, but it felt like he was trying to put me off at a very crucial time in the game. And it wasn't like I was walking directly in front of goals when I marked it in the pocket. We're talking about like six inches to the left or six inches to the right. It was such a weird time to pull me up at the top of my mark. And I go back and I miss the goal. And that was probably the pop of the balloon of the full momentum. After I had missed that shot, I thought, you know, there's four or five minutes left. It's four or five goals. If I had to kick that one and got it under two or three, um, we're a sniff. But that that was probably the one where we knew it was too little too late for the water park animals. 
Yeah. We've got Lenny's game next week. Lenny's game next week. This is going, all of it. Mm -hmm. What do you reckon? Last time, this will be the second last time you'll see my hair on camera. And what about me? Are you going to cut all mine off? or? I'm going to give you a bowl cut. A bold cut or a bowl cut? They need to clarify that one. <laughs> had a um, had a goal, but uh, obviously not the result the boys would have wanted. Um, I don't know. I think it might put us out of fourth, but hopefully they get it the win next week and uh, play a bit of finals and who knows? Maybe win the whole thing. You're not going to win many games when you kick seven seventeen. So uh, they say bad kicking's bad football. That was bad kicking, and you better believe that was bad football. Spearman, we just got to hope that St Mary's lost. And that comes down to next round, but if they win, we're going to hope they lose next week. So, I don't know. We, we've lost personnel across the park. We haven't been able to train because of the weather. So, um, yeah, no continuity. It's, it's been a tough couple of weeks, but it all comes down to next week. If we win and, and Mary's lose, we'll be back in. So, a lot to play for, Daniel. It's a funny game, footy. It's a really funny game. Um, <laughs> Our goal kicking didn't help, uh, especially, I feel like in the fourth quarter we were trying to rush ourselves too much, um, which I guess we had to at the start, um, to be able to kick seven or eight goals in the last quarter, we'd have to move the ball pretty quick, um, but in the end we just, yeah, just couldn't convert. So there you have it guys. We've lost. St. Mary's won on the weekend, so we are now out of the finals on the live ladder. We're out on 10%. St. Mary's next week have a team that they've lost to earlier in the year, so we need them to lose again. And we, in our final game, have a team we lost to by 10 goals. So it's a bit of an uphill battle now for us to make finals. We need Mary's to lose, and we need us to win. Um, it's exciting. It's going to be an exciting final game. It's going to be an exciting final episode, potentially, of the Waddle Park Gag Day Vlogs. Um, so follow Marmalade, follow us across the weekend if you want to tap into how we go. Otherwise, I'll try and get the video out next week on Tuesday, potentially Wednesday. But yes, it all comes down to this for the Waddle Park animals. Must win, and we need one result to go our way as well. Once again, guys, I appreciate the support. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Get down to Lenny's game and support the boys if you can this weekend. And um, I'll see you for some more content very, very soon. Cheers, guys.